uh, if uh, S1 is online, you can start. May it please this honorable court, this is Council S1 along with Mrs. Sister Council S2 appearing on behalf of the petitioners in the matter concerning Durga and others versus Union of Indus. If your lordships are well versed with the facts of the case, may the council move on to her contentions? Yes, please. Much obliged, your lordship. Your lordship, the council for the petitioners has mainly three contentions to put forth before this honorable court. Firstly, the provision of Hind Succession Act are in violation of the principles of equality ancient in Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of Indus. Secondly, the Muslim law of succession does not confirm with the principles of equality and hence violates Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of Indus. And finally, industry succession of property of a transgender professing Hindu religion ought to be governed under the Hind Succession Act 1956. Of these, the first contention shall be dealt by this council, and the latter merits of the case shall be dealt by my sister council. If your lordships are uh, with your lordships' kind permission, may the council move on to contentions? Yes, please. Much obliged, your lordship. So the uh, first contention is that the provision of Hind Succession Act are in violation of the principles of equality ancient in Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of Indus. It is humbly submitted before this honorable court that Section 8 and Section 15 of the Hindu Succession Act violate fundamental rights under the Constitution of Indus. The petitioners assert that Section 8, read along with Schedule 1 of the Hindu Succession Act 1956, unfair, unreasonable, arbitrary, and hence violates Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of Indus. With the Lordship's kind permission, may the Council uh, court the session? You can proceed. Uh, Please proceed. In the launch. Your Lordship, Section 8 of the Hindu Succession Act runs as following. The general rule of succession in the case of males, the property of the male Hindu dying interstate should devolve according to the provision of this chapter. Firstly, upon the heirs being relative specified in class 1. And secondly, if there is you, you no class 1, you, then you upon... Don't have to, you don't have to read out the entire section. You can please move on to your arguments. Because the, in, otherwise you will not have time to complete your arguments. Indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, in this particular section, a classification, in this particular section, in the instant case, there's an unnecessary classification between men and women. The Hindu succession act creates an unnecessary classification solely upon a gender. There, here, there is no intelligible differentia or rational excess in differing a mother and father. Moving through the factual matrix of this particular case, Mr. Heyman has raised a child and late Dr. Uh, Arun, Mr. Arun, by all himself, Mrs. Vaishnavi, who is the counsel, mother of Mr. Arun. Counsel, Indeed, uh, uh, do you agree that there is a, a, a concept of positive discrimination in favor of females as enshrined in Article 15 of the Constitution? Indeed, Lordship, but in the present case, what we the petitioners believe have, is that... You have, you have not heard the question. Please wait. See, now, Indeed, having Lordship. accepted that, uh, how, what is your opinion regarding the concept of a positive discrimination in favor of the female in case of succession because the mother is given preference over the father on the concept that a female being a weaker section, she is entitled to better protection? Indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, uh, I uh, completely accept the uh, idea of what you said, Your Lordship. But here, the class difference, that is, the mother is taken to a class one hair and the father is pulled down to class two. I, uh, the petitioner do not contend that that right should be snatched away from the uh, mother or the female has. All that we're contending is that why can't they be put together in one, one particular way? Why the father and mother can't be uh, judged in the same criteria? Let the father be in class one. That solves the whole issue, your lordship. No, that, that, that goes against the point that you accepted that a female is entitled to better protection or positive discrimination I guess, as against the male. That is why the female is in class one and the husband is in class two. In your lordship, times have changed. And even in the instant case, we can clearly see that here the father is the one who is more agreed, who is more independent no, rather than the mother. We cannot, we cannot decide the constitutionality of a section based on the facts of one particular case. Indeed, your it, it, it has to of offend the majority of the parties affected. Indeed, Your Lordship, we clearly understand the, uh, uh, the 
point that you said but what we are saying is that a child uh, to uh, a parents is equally important to a child and whereas there is a classification like this let both the parents be in the same ring that is the only condition that the petitioners are making here and we clearly believe that there should be protection to women but in the instant case there is no reason for such a protection even though let, let the mother be in the oh, same class so are you are you suggesting that a child is entitled to equally succeed uh, to the uh, assets of both parents no your lordship here the question is the child's property no no okay let's look at it that way uh, are you mm-hmm. saying that uh, the both the parents are entitled equally to succeed to the uh, property of the child no your lordship it should be that's what we are contending see if that is your contention then what do you what what will be your argument regarding testamentary succession what about the your discretion lordship. of the uh, testator as to your who lordship, this property should go to indeed lordship your lordship here me that there is a mere discrimination there is a discrimination on the gender your lordship that is the sole point of the contention that we are putting forward we are not uh, interesting with any other pro- uh, provision of this particular act all we are saying is that why See, is the, there the a person, discrimination person who owns the person who owns the property is entitled to discriminate between the gender it's only the state that you can seek protection from you cannot enforce a fundamental right as against another individual is it not the right of the person who owns the property to decide who it should go to so in case of testamentary succession what happens to your arguments you know chip uh, this is what we're talking about is an interstate succession you know chip if that person writes a will or something of that so then he can clearly decide whom the property should be going to but when it comes oh, to interstate oh, succession by, by, let by it that logic naturally. by that logic the very fact that the person has not write, written a will shows his intention that this property should go as per the succession act so he is aware of what the law says and I, that was his intention that it should go as per the provisions of the succession act then again who are you to say that it should not be along those lines the lordship uh, taking the taking the normal constraints that we have in our country people are not very aware of what will happen after they die and people are don't aware, anticipate are aware, their death the lordship are you aware of the concept that uh, ignorance of law is not an excuse indeed the lordship indeed the lordship Ah, uh, we clearly understand that it's lordship, but people Then, who do not write they will really don't believe that that it should devolve according. All we are stating is that there is a discrimination on the basis of gender, and that should not be there. A person is not sure what happens to his life the next moment, your lordship. Thus, just merely presuming that this person might have thought like that would would be unfair, your lordship. you know so what we clearly contend is that when a mother is kept in class 1 we are not asking the mother to be taken out of class 1 or snatching away any right from the mother lordship all we are contending is that let the father be in the same class as the mother see council uh, the lordship the council the question posted by my learned brother judge is not even addressed by yourself you are just hijacking us from the whole point of question kindly answer the question and then move on to the further part of your argument The Indian very cru- the question is not even addressed. In your lordship, the council might have just missed it out. Uh, if if possible, may the lordship kindly repeat the question. The question has always been the same: that is it not the purview of the person who owns the property to decide who it should go to, and can you enforce a fundamental right as against that person to say that it should devolve equally on males and females? is it not fundamental right purely within the purview of state action is the question the lordship uh, in in the lordship lordship yes it is but here there is no will your lordship so when uh, if the person clearly wants the property devolved to whomever he wants he can clearly write a will your lordship but in absence of a will is that is that possible in, in case of a muslim personal law a will can be written by anybody your lordship can the entire property of a muslim be uh, transferred by him through a will are you aware you are lordship yeah. uh, this particular lordship uh, i i would uh, just take a moment to look back look into it and get back to your lordship in okay. the same context 
you know, ship, uh, the Muslim can only uh, transfer one third of his property through a will. Exactly. So, the, where does your argument go in that contention? In the lordship, that particular contention will be dealt by my co-counsel in detail in the next contention. Here we are exclusively dealing with the Hindu succession act, lordship. Okay, okay, please continue. Indeed, lordship. The lordship, hence it is humbly submitted uh, by the petition section eight, read along with uh, read along with schedule one of the Hindu succession act, is unfair, unreasonable, and arbitrary. In lordship, the second contention, the second sub contention. Is that the council of the petition humbly submit that section 15 of the Hind Succession Act 1956 is devoid of the uh, principles of fairness, equality, and good conscience, and hence violate Article 14 of the Constitution. In the case, the denial of late Dr. Rukmani's property to her mother, Sharda Devi, would amount to clear gender discrimination. Uh, Lordship, clearly, the separate uh, provision for both men and women. Clearly, why is Article 15, Article uh, 14 and 15 of the Constitution your lordship? Because in this particular case, when a male dies interstate, first the property is transferred to his widow, children, and then to his mother, your lordship. Whereas when it comes to a woman, what happens is that that particular property is transferred first to her husband, children, and then to her husband's heirs. So in this particular case, we can clearly see that how it is not being given to her own parents. There's not a distinction between the property self-acquired by her and property inherited. Your lord, uh, your lordship, your lordship, the council begs your pardon, your lordship, you're not audible. In that, in that context, is there not a difference between the property inherited by the female as well as self-acquired property? Is there Indeed. not a rational, in... rational uh, nexus between those two? Concepts? Uh, indeed, not your lordship. What we would like to contend is that when there is a law which, uh, lordship, let the law be same for both men and women. Let even if it is interstate, even if it is by self-acquired, so, so, etc. So, so, so if uh, uh, if the law is amended so that the male's property also goes to a male and a female's property also goes to a male, you are okay. You just want it to be equal. You don't want it to be equal towards the female. Indeed, not your lordship. Indeed, not your lordship. What the council of the petitions meant is that when uh, the property of the male is going to his mother, that is a self-acquired property, lordship. Why is property for a female not going to her parents? Like, uh, if with the uh, permission of the uh, lordship, may I just quote an illustration here? Yes. Your lordship, if a couple has three baby girls, I can say three uh, women. Children, they will never get a property that is self-acquired by their daughters. That is uh, clearly unfair, your lordship. Whereas the same thing, if they have a son, they definitely get a property. They definitely get the property. We'll, we, so there we'll is a clear differentiation. Back, we will have to go back to the argument that if the mother wants it to go to their children, she will simply write a will. And Indeed, if she does lordship. not have such an intention, she will allow it to go as per the Succession Act. Mother, your lordship, here the thing is that will we are not considering will, your lordship. Will is something which can be written and then it will everything will be according to the will, your lordship. But here we are only talking about industry succession, your lordship. So, with no, respect see, when to we are, when we are considering the constitutionality on the basis of discrimination, we have to consider whether there are other options also before the person who is giving the will. He is not Indeed, bound by the succession act alone, Indeed, he has provisions you know, to make a will also. Indeed, your lordship. Your lordship, writing a will is something which is a task and most of the people, they really don't do that, your lordship. When we come to ground realities, this is something which needs to be tackled in a better manner, your lordship. Even we are living in a society where even... Oh, we are, we are beating around the same bush, so you can go back to the next point. Indeed, your lordship. Your lordship, all uh, uh, what we're contending is... Uh, what we're contending is that uh, when there is a law, for example, if that is section 15 of the constitution, uh, section 15 of the Hindu Succession Act, let that particular section be same for men and women. If there is a devolvement of property to his mother and his family, why there is no devolvement to the property to her parents and her mother? That is the uh, uh, contention that the uh, Council for the Petitioners is putting forward. And 
later in this uh, in these provisions of the hindu succession act constitute a clear discrimination regarding the male and female succession in lordship in the instant case miss sharda devi who is the mother of dr lee drukmani worked hard to provide her daughter good education due to which she became financially independent dr rajiv who has only deserted her and started to reside with another lady during her lifetime of rukmani and hence denying miss sharda devi who is poor widower dr rukmani's left out property would be make her life miserable and that would lead to clear unfairness in lot moving council, on i have council, i have uh, council i have uh, i believe you can conclude you can conclude your arguments in the lordship you know so therefore uh, may i conclude the whole point uh, lordship yes because uh, we are constrained by time you have to in the lordship there are I be clearly understand that, Lordship. Lordship, thus it is humbly uh, prayed before this honourable court that the king's succession. One thing, one thing. I have, uh, Council, I have a question on uh, two questions. So I hope your co-counsel will address those questions. Indeed, Lordship. Uh, Lordship, if that is from the Hindu Succession Act, uh, if at all your co-counsel is, no, no, you just conclude your arguments. I'll pose a question to your co-counsel, which is uh, basically general in nature with regard to the Indeed, case you are considering. That would be great, Lordship. Your Lordship, thus it is humbly prayed before the Honourable Court that the Hindu Succession Act, nineteen fifty-six, is struck down by applying the principle of fidelity. Thus, uh, the therefore it is humbly submitted before the Honourable Court that the provisions of the Hindu Succession Act are in violation of the principles of equality ensured in Article fourteen and fifteen of the Constitution of India. If your Lordships are uh, have do not do not have any further queries, may be uh, counselled before to my sister counsel, Your Lordship. Yes, please. As to much of life, lordship. Am I audible, your lordship? Yes. May it please this honourable court. This is Council S two, along with my co-counsel S one, on behalf of the petitioner before this honourable Supreme Court. This council has mainly two contentions to place before this honourable court. Firstly, whether the intestate succession of property of a transgender professing Hindu religion ought to be governed under the Hindu Succession Act of 1956, and secondly, whether the Muslim law of succession conforms to the principles of equality and if it violates Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution of India. With the Lordship's kind permission, may the Council move on to her first contention. Proceed. A much obliged, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, uh, the first contention. Before proceeding into the your arguments, I have I need I. I... i think i we need a collective uh, explanation from your end that is like interesting uh, a matter on uh, this uh, your petitioner is a uh, like vairamani and uh, do you think uh, like uh, uh, this petition filed by yours and article 32 is maintainable in the real lordship so what is the like uh, uh, ground in which you filed this petition Your Lordship, uh, the first ground that we filed the petition is to uh, is to say that the uh, ruling by the civil court was no, unlawful. No. You are the one who is dealing with the uh, concerns of transgender, right? In in the real Lordship. Uh, what what is exactly your ground? You filed the Article Thirty Two petition, so what is exactly your ground? Is the ground? Your Lordship. Your Lordship, the first ground that we have uh, filed the petition uh, is because the. Order by the civil court uh, stating that the Hindu uh, transgenders were not included under the Hindu Succession Act was violative of uh, fundamental rights. Uh, uh, your lordship. So, do you think it is possible that uh, an order of a learned civil court can be challenged under Article Thirty Two? Indeed, your lordship. Because uh, if the council may, uh, in, in the present case, your lordship. Uh, if it is in, if it is yes. please reason please make us understand the how it is possible uh, you know actually because um, uh, the council for the respond uh, petitioners have approached this uh, honorable court as an alternative remedy you know actually alternative remedy alternative remedy is article 32 section 32 and uh, alternative remedy under section 32 and, and article 32 No, you know, your lordship. Article thirty-two is to approach the Supreme Court if there is a violation of fundamental rights, your lordship. So you uh, use the phrase alternate remedy. Uh, what is your uh, remedy if you have a decree against you in a civil court? Ah, uh, sorry, your lordship. What is, what, what is your general remedy if you have a decree against you 
in a civil court your worship this was an appeal is this an appeal or a writ petition it's a writ petition your worship you filed a writ petition under article 32 oh, so so then if you have a decree against you by a competent civil court what is your remedy uh, your worship for this uh, particular uh, case at hand we uh, we approach the supreme court uh, can you can you approach the supreme court when there is a decree of a civil court is involved uh, yes your worship why why how how under which provision do you have any case laws to support your contention how can you challenge the order of a competent civil court under writ proceeding without going for an appeal your yeah, uh, lordship appeal is the remedy for which we have approached uh, approached the supreme court including also uh, including the writ petition your lordship what, what, what is the what is the remedy what is the concept of alternate remedy yes and just tell us what the concept of alternate remedy is and uh, use uh, judicial pronouncements to support your argument your lordship alternative remedy is uh, no bar for filing a uh, writ your lordship no i am asking you what alternate remedy is i am not asking you whether it is a bar or not i am asking you what is the concept of alternate remedy and also please explain to us what is original jurisdiction elocchip alternative uh, remedy is uh, basically the appeal in 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 this instant case elocchip in this instant case alternative remedy is an appeal no, no not not in the instant case what is the general concept what do you understand when you what do you mean when you say there is an alternative remedy and what is the bar or the uh, embargo placed upon entertainment of writ petitions in case of an alternate remedy Uh, your lordship, uh, can may you please repeat the question again? I couldn't catch you. See the what is the general concept of alternate remedy, and how is that applicable to writ petitions? You just entertain uh, enlighten us regarding that that aspect. Your lordship, uh, we have approached uh, the Supreme Court uh, for the enforcement of fundamental rights. Your lordship, in the present case, alternative uh, remedy. Uh, as have stated before, would mean an appeal of uh, from the civil court, uh, an appeal of what the civil court has already stated. Your option. Counsel, the question is very simple. I repeat the question for one more time with an example. That is, uh, you are a party to a suit in a civil court. The suit is decreed, and after the decree, if you are aggrieved with the decree, will you go to the Supreme Court and file an Article Thirty Two petition? That's the question in 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 the most simple sense. if you can support your answer with any judicial pronouncement or any law in this regard please do so or answer the question directly elocship by uh, the council does not have any judicial precedents for the questions uh, that this honorable supreme court has stated but uh, the alternate to your next argument in the ideology uh, elocship uh, uh, continuing with uh, the first uh, issue that is uh, the interstate succession of property of a chancellor who is practicing hindu religion uh, firstly the dismissal of suit uh, stating lack of provision is in violation of fundamental rights which are uh, which is enshrined in the constitution of india your lordship your lordship article 14 of the constitution of india states that the state shall not deny to any person equality before law and equal protection of law and article 15 provides that the state shall not discriminate against any citizens on grounds of only religion race caste sex and place of birth or any of them the supreme court has asked the central government to treat the transgenders as socially and economically backward classes and the third gender has gained legal recognition in the eyes of law when this honorable supreme court has ruled that the fundamental rights should be available to, to the third gender in the same way as they were provided to the male and females in the case of nalsa versus union of india reported in all india reporter 2014 uh, supreme court page number 1863 your lordship india has had a poor history of gendered laws where inheritance of property is governed by personal laws uh, of the respective region and community council the uh, yes. the constituent assembly has in its wisdom decided that uh, positive discrimination is allowable for females because they are in a economically or socially backward situation and as such they require extra protection 
in the literature. Is, is, is it for us to sit in judgment over that aspect and decide that, wait, wait for the question to be completed, uh, okay. and decide that transgenders are also entitled to the same protection? Is it not the mandate of the parliament to decide whether the transgenders are also entitled to such positive discrimination? Your Lordship, uh, this Honorable Supreme Court has uh, stated that uh, fundamental rights should also be available to a third gender and that the, th uh, the transgenders are also considered yes. in the eyes yes. of law as a but backward that, class. That, 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 that would only apply to Article 14. Article 15 has a special provision for women because the, the Constitution in its wisdom has decided that women need extra protection. Indeed, your Lordship. Yeah, is it for us to decide that transgenders also need that special protection? Isn't that not the purview of the Parliament to decide in Swiss them? Uh, uh, your Lordship, uh, the Supreme Court is the apex court of the land, and the Supreme Court, uh, anything that the Supreme Court lays down would be a precedent in all the other cases, your Lordship. Un un under what provision is that law apply? Your Lordship. So which, which law says that the law laid down by the Supreme Court is binding on all other courts? Uh, Article 141, Your Lordship. Okay. Your Lordship, uh, um, as I was stating before, in the uh, present case in India, there has been, uh, even if we look at the history of India, there has been various texts from Hindu mythology which suggest that the third sex were individuals uh, uh, till pre modern India, Your Lordship. It was the Criminal Tribes Act of 1871, which uh, labeled units as criminals and mandated a registration and granted widespread power to arrest a third gender under the apprehension of promiscuous activity as per uh, chapter two of the Criminal Tribes Act of 1871, Your Lordship. Under the Hindu Succession Act, your Lordship, the male and female Hindu succession has been specifically given. The act in itself is gender neutral. Section 24 and 26 of the Hindu succession act lays the grounds for disqualification of a person from inheritance and being a transgender is not given as a done for any such disqualification. This honorable court has had two opportunities to deal with inheritance rights. In this matter, the court mostly relied on customary practices uh, while recognizing this inheritance right. Uh, the first one was the case of Elias versus Baksha, reported in All India Reporter, 1990, Madhya Pradesh, page number 334. And the second case uh, was... Counselor, could you please, could you please explain uh, uh, the contention you just mentioned to us, erased? Um, um, uh, may I please know... Because you mentioned that uh, what we understood is that the purview of the transgenders are completely uh, avoided from the statute. That's what you mentioned, right? If we are rightly understood. Uh, uh, your Lordship, what I was trying to say was that transgenders uh, were a protect, uh, were um, widely known uh, or widely specified in the Hindu mythology. And after pre uh, post colonization, the Criminal Tribes Act of 1871 was instituted, which is no longer in force. Now we do have the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act of 2019, Your Lordship. And according to that, according to Section 4, what 5. The, yeah, what is the remedy that you're seeking from this court? Uh, Your Lordship, the first remedy that uh, this Honorable uh, Counsel for the Petitioner would be seeking is to, in the, in the present case, the petitioner would like to contend that. Uh, Vairamani has had a transgender certificate as was specified no, no, under. Be specific. What is the remedy that you are seeking from this court? Your Lordship, uh, the petitioner would like to uh, um, ask for a general neutral in uh, succession act, Your Lordship, because uh, gender is an ever, uh, it's, it's a very liquid term, Your Lordship. Gender is always evolving. What is the proposition? What is the proposition that you are making to make the act more gender neutral? Uh, your Lordship, uh, the Honorable Supreme Court may invoke Article 142 of the Constitution of India's Your Lordship, because the case at hand is one which rightly demands invoking of plenary powers of the Honorable Supreme Court, Your Lordship. The Constitution of India and the Indian Judiciary what is, enshrines what that. Is, it, what is Article 142? Your Lordship, Article 142 states that the Supreme Court, in exercise of its jurisdiction, may pass such decree or make such order as is necessary for doing complete justice in any cause or matter pending before it, and any decree so passed you, or order. You exhausted the jurisdiction under Article 32, and you want, uh, yeah, Article 4, 142. How is it possible? Your Lordship, uh, because now, 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 as per condition, should we consider this case under Article 32? 
or consider it as an SLP under uh, SLP or should be considered as an appeal, regular civil appeal? Uh, your Lordship, under Article 32, Your Lordship. Our um, discretion rights or our jurisdiction under Article 32 is limited. Would you agree? Your lordship, the Supreme Court is apex court of the land, your lordship. Agreed, agreed. But we cannot uh, sit in judgment over an appeal in, in an, uh, or a regular civil appeal under Article 32. Can we? One more question. Who, who can you uh, uh, enforce your fundamental right against? Your lordship? Who can you enforce your fundamental right against? In this present case, your lordship, uh, we are yeah. enforced. Generally. Can you enforce your fundamental right against another individual, private person? Your Lordship, here, uh, it is filed not against the order of the civil court, but it's I'm filed against... I'm asking a general question. Can you enforce a fundamental right against a private individual? Yes, Your Lordship. You can? Yes, Your Lordship. Okay, then can you just uh, read me Article 30? Article 13, uh, uh, indeed, your lordship. Article 13 reads that Article 30 reads that laws uh, inconsistent with or in uh, derogation of the fundamental rights. Uh, clause 1 states that all laws in force in the territory of India immediately before the commencement of this constitution, in so far as they are inconsistent with the provisions of this part, shall to the extent of such uh, inconsist inconsistency be void. Clause 2 states that the state shall not make any laws which takes away or abridges the right uh, conferred by this part, and any law made in contravention of this clause shall to the extent of contravention who, be void. Who, who is that embargo placed upon? Illogic. Who is that embargo placed upon? Uh, your subclause uh, 2 start the what is the beginning of subclause 2 say? The state shall not make any laws which takes so so, so who is that embargo placed upon? The uh, who, who is prevented from making laws against violation of fundamental rights? Is it the state? The legislature you know. The state, right? Yes, Your Lordship. So, will I be correct to say that fundamental rights are only enforceable as against the state? In, no, Your Lordship. In, okay, please. Okay, please. you can you can go. Uh, thank you, Your Lordship. Uh, can I uh, may I continue from where I've left off? Your time is time is already up. Yeah, you can conclude. Indeed, indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship. Uh, Uh, I would like to conclude by uh, asking the Honorable Supreme Court to invoke Article 148 of the Constitution of India Lordship by citing, uh, by uh, ruling two conditions. The first one is that Article 142 can be exercised, uh, it can be used if the court is either, otherwise exercising uh, its jurisdiction as given under a DDA versus Skipper Construction Corporation Private Limited, reported in 1996, uh, Volume 4, Supreme Court Cases, Station Number 622. And it has been held. Your Lordship, am I audible? I believe you can conclude your arguments. Indeed, Your The Supreme Court has also stated that the powers are provided under one, Article 142 are complementary, supplementary, and residuary to the powers. Uh, particularly bestowed on the Supreme Court. With that, Your Lordship, uh, I would like to conclude by also stating that there has been a lot, uh, we, when we look at the international arena, we have the UD, uh, UDHR and also ICCPR, all of which India is a party to. And uh, uh, in, India is part of this international principles, Your Lordship. With that, uh, I would like to conclude by stating that uh, transgenders must also be included under, uh, Hindu transgenders must be included in, under the Hindu uh, uh, Succession Act, and also a general neutral law may be uh, provided here also. With that, uh, may the council uh, move on to her prayer. The council had yes, one. You. Uh, you, you'll be now taking more of uh, time from your rebuttal. So you can uh, think it over, and if you want to take more time, you can take. But your rebuttal time will be, um, the time will be shortened. May the council uh, move on to her prayer, Lordship. 
In the light of issues raised, arguments advanced, and authority cited, the petitioners humbly pray that this honorable Supreme Court may kindly adjudge and declare that one, the provisions of Insurrection Act are in violation to the principles of equality enshrined in Article 14 and 15. Two, the Muslim law section does not conform with the principles of equality and hence violates Article 14 and 15. And three, injustice succession of property of a transgender professing Hindu religion ought to be governed under the Hindu Succession Act of 1956. All this honorable court may kindly pass any other order that it deems fit. For this act of kindness, the petitioner shall in duty one forever pay. It was an honor arguing before this honorable court. Thank you, sir. Respondent, uh, T1 can start the argument. The council summit, uh, solicits permission to begin. Honorable greetings to the bench. May I please the honorable court? This is the council on behalf of the respondent in the case Durga and Jio and others versus union offenders. If it may please the bench, the council seeks permission to address the bench collectively as your lordship. So we can uh, uh, forget, forget all these formalities. We can proceed to the case. Okay. And please don't ask permission for everything you do. You are here to argue. Please argue. Most certainly, your lordship. So as the first issue states, I just want to make one thing clear. It is to be stated that I, Council 1, would be dealing with issue 1, 2, and 3, while my learned co-counsel will deal with issue number 4 and 5. So as the first issue states, with a separately governed and separate order of succession of male and female, under the Hind Succession Act 1956, is arbitrary, gender discriminatory, and unconstitutional. The Council has substantiated this issue into various sub-issues, presenting before various prompt arguments. Uh, it is humbly submitted before the Honorable Court that in the present case, Durga, which is an NGO, filed a red petition challenging the various sections and schedules of the Hind Succession Act 1956. The Parliament of India, in this, uh, your Lordship, uh, my bad, enacted the Hind Succession Act in 1956. The object of the Act states that it was enacted to amend and codify the law relating to in-state in succession among Hinds. The Act established, establishes a uniform and comprehensive uh, system of devolution of property that applies to a person governed by the Mitakshara and Daibhaga schools as well as those people who have been guided by the various uh, systems uh, pre previously, Your Lordship. Hind personal laws, because before this act came into force, they were governed by the Shastrik and cu customary laws, which varied from region to region. Now the Hind Succession Act is a principal act applicable to all Hinds over in this. The Hind Succession Act 1956 originally uh, didn't give uh, daughters equal rights to ancestral property. This uh, uh, disparity was removed by an, an amendment that came into force uh, on September 9, 2005. Mitakshara law, your lordship, is predominantly prevalent in most of the northern and western parts of the Indus. And under this, women are allowed to inherit separate property. The Indus constitution has steered Indus women into a new era. They no doubt enjoy the same rights as men do, get the same opportunities and openings as men have, and are, uh, and are in no way inferior to them. Many modern Indus legislation has also helped in stabilizing, has also helped in stabilizing the position of women and giving them economic independence and power with the men. Article 14 of the Indus Constitution mandates the state. Council, uh, are you the proposition that uh, there are no changes required to the existing law as it? Uh, as it is now laid down in the Hindu Succession Act. Is that your proposition? Yes, Your Lordship. I... That's your proposition, right? No yeah. change is required. Then I read from your memorial. Uh, it states that in page number two, it states that uh, revision of law is a must in a dynamic society like, like ours, which is engaged in the adventure of creating a new social order. So this law, which was laid down in the 50s, it's we are now about 70 years from 1950. That going by your uh, memorial, by your arguments itself, isn't it necessary that the revision of law is the order of the day today? Uh, much obliged, Your Lordship. If it appears that the impugned legislation is based on a reasonable classification, founded on intelligible differentia, and that said and differentia have a rational relation to the object uh, sought to be achieved by it, then its validity cannot be successfully challenged under Article 14. No, the concept of woman, the concept of woman's role in society as it existed in 1950s, is it the it's same right. concept that exists today? Is it the same concept that exists today? The role of a woman in a family, the role of the woman in the society? Indeed, so, Lordship, your arguments, that, that's why the... Dynamic society. 
that's what the amendment uh, to the hence succession act 1956 uh, which was in the 2005 uh, uh, held uh, more descendants especially for females uh, i repeat lordship females have been elevated as class 1 heirs in respect of the property left behind by hindu male who has died in in state uh, that is without making a will so where is the discrimination after the amendment these heirs have been added in the list of class 1 heirs like son of the pre uh, predeceased daughter of a predeceased daughter daughter of the pre uh, pre predeceased daughter of a predeceased daughter uh, everywhere it's daughter and daughter so there's no discrimination actually council council their argument the arguments of the petitioners is that the female having been excluded uh, a male having been excluded from the first schedule of the legal heirs is itself proof of discrimination how do you answer that your lordship uh, uh, as uh, my learned uh, respondent uh, petitioner said they were saying uh, they were stating that sharda devi uh, who is the mother of dr rukmini should be provided with the property so it is now well according to the rule uh, according to the rule dr uh, rajiv should get the property so it is now well settled principle of law that sentiment of sympathy alone would not be a guiding factor in determining the rights of the parties which are otherwise clear and unambiguous like uh, to support these arguments there are cases of the mdhs idc and others versus hariom enterprises and others before us there is a grievous grieve situation of the cases sharda devi we find that there is some injustice being done to her what can this court do to redress her grievances rather than hand uh, banging upon technicalities it's 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 up to the supreme guardian uh, it's up to you uh, your lordship but in its stricto sensu equity as such may not have any role to play there are in numerous cases like uh, like the case of ganga devi versus uh, district judge uh, nanital and others in which the court actually held that the court would not determine a question only on the basis of sympathy or sentiment now we have we are faced with the dilemma should we enforce law or do justice it's it's up to the supreme guardian your lordship i'm just here to present my arguments before you shall i proceed further with my arguments please proceed manu smriti chapter 9 lays down the principle of dharma of a wife it says that a wife's primary duty is towards her husband and the second secondary duty of the wife is towards her matrimonial family all of her ties to lordship all of her ties to her natal home are severed as soon as she completes the ritual of uh, saptapadi so where is the discrimination as such it is in very accordance with the personal laws what is the what is the legal sanctity of manu smriti before this court it's just that uh, Manuspriti is often criticized as a document which is uh, very much derogatory to the freedom of women. Yes, sir. Lordship, indeed, would rely upon a particular observation that is laid under Manuspriti. Uh, I I just want to quote here uh, a Sanskrit uh, shlok, which means "Abhivadan silashya nitto vidhu peshina chitwari tasse vardhante ayu vidya yesho palam." It means. like the women like the people should be governed according to the religious laws religious texts your lordship is it's just that like in the case of united province and atika begum also the federal court held that the customary laws were the laws in force this spirit can neither demand, uh, remain dormant nor static and can never be allowed to fossilize we can can you say that a customary law can prevail even when it is in violation of the fundamental right are you placing the customary rights over and above the fundamental rights of the parties indeed not your lordship it, it's just that i want to uh, hear uh, uh, i want to mention the case of uh, in krishna singh and madhura ahit the supreme court the supreme guardian where i am standing before you your lordship clearly stated that part 3 of the constitution did not affect any personal laws as they were dif- very different from general laws and derived from ancient cu- customs the court the court actually held that part 3 of the constitution does not affect the personal laws of either of the parties the courts have adopted the non interference approach and even to cite the case of renold uh, rajamani versus uh, union of india so what about the case of third uh, the transgenders uh, most certainly if, apply, if we imply the same logic then what will be the case of the, the transgenders my my my, my co counsel will deal with that uh, very soon your lordship uh, it's it's just not my issue uh, at the present no, i know that question uh, my learned brother judge asked a question if if uh, customary principle versus the fundamental right violation 
which one will prevail that was the question basically and this court in many situations even in the shabrimala judgment this court took a stand a very concrete stand so you can completely uh, escape yourself or wash your hands by saying that it is a customary principle and uh, that should be in a separate bracket in dd lordship but there are many cases and many instances in which the court held that the marriage under the hind law was a sacrament and it was an indissoluble dissoluble union flesh to flesh bone to bone that would continue even to the next world see that so how was, can that dr rajiv cannot that that was rendered in a different context there the question was not whether there was a violation of fundamental rights by your logic even sadi would be considered to be legal because that was also based on a customary principle can you now say that sati is also valid because it's a customary law going by the logic of flesh to flesh bone to bone sati uh, uh, no your lordship it's it, it's just that i'm saying that uh, my uh, uh, client uh, dr rajiv should get the property because i just don't want uh, the justice to be prevail only on the basis of sympathy uh, and sentiment your, your client rajiv and what do you say about who's your client dr rajiv Is 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 Rajiv a party in this? In the are you arguing in appeal over the judgment of the civil court, and are you appealing Bally, for uh, my bad, Lord Chief? It 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 was the Union of India. I just uh, wanted to state that Dr. Rajiv should get the property. Obviously, you have a call from both the state as well as Mr. Rajiv. Apparently, in the Lord Chief. Can he proceed further with my argument? Yes, yes, sir. the object of the legislation is to retain property within the joint family upon marriage with, which brought male and females together forming one institution therefore it is obvious then that in recognition of that position when the wife's succession opened the heirs of husbands were pro- uh, permitted to succeed it this was a result of the unity of the wife into the husband's family upon marriage moving uh, on to my uh, next issue your lordship Uh, talking about the whether the religious in- instruction providing double share to uh, brothers as discriminatory and violative of the fundamental rights the council on behalf of the respondent humbly submits before this honorable court that constitutional validity challenging the religious instruction by petitioner 3 fatima is not at all discriminatory and violative of fundamental rights in the instant matter your lordship the heirs entitled to succeed the property of mohammed khan's two sons and his only unmarried daughter fatima according to muslim law of succession she is entitled to inherit only one half of the property inherited by the by her brothers hence the religious so instruction providing what, is the, what is the logic what is the logic behind that why is why does muslim law allow for or uh, double the share to the brother to the male successor and uh, half the share only to the female successor what is the lo- logic behind that your, your lordship it has been very clearly stated in the proposition itself that the recitals in quran the long standing practice of the founder of religion no, no, what is the logic behind is the logic the logic what, is what of is What is the logic Indeed. behind that? Why does the you can continue? Yes. Yes. No, please, 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 you continue, Your Lordship. I just want to hear your question. What is the logic behind the uh, double the share to the son, half the share to the daughter? What is the logic behind that? It's it's just that Surah for uh, Surah four of the Quran states, uh, from what is left by parents and those nearest related, there is a share for men and a share for women, whether the property is small or large. Or a definite share. So counsel, Because the- uh, 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 to bring brevity to the question asked by my learned brother judge, see on a plain reading, forget about the fact that what is stated in the uh, uh, religious text. On a plain reading, in this century, in the present time, don't you feel like there is a clear cut discrimination is involved? I don't feel it uh, so uh, in my humble opinion, Your Lordship, because she is providing uh, provided with, uh, with the property. She is not deprived of being her, uh, de- de- deprived of the rights. Actually, she is uh, getting uh, one half of the property. Because as, I, would like to, as, I would like to, I would like to take the exact word used by my learned brother judge. What is the logic? I just want to uh, cite a case here, Your Lordship. Uh, in the case of Indus Young Lawyers Association and others versus State of Kerala, which was the case of twenty eighteen. all are familiar with that in that the uh, the supreme court the gajan court uh, held that uh, stated that uh, my bad lordship constitutional morality in a secular polity would employ the harmonization of fundamental rights they will uh, uh, imply the harmonization of uh, uh, fundamental rights which include the right of every individual are you aware of the lordship of uh, indian young lawyers association this lordship are you aware of the 
facts of this Indian Young Lawyers Association case? Yes, Elosh, the Sapri Mala case, the women were stopped from uh, entering into the uh, 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 temple. Uh, finding nexus with that decision here? It's just that. Case. The what was the ultimate decision in the uh, Young Lawyers case? They shouldn't be stopped from entering the temple. So it was a decision in favor of women. Yes, Elosh. In favor of gender rights. So if you're going that rational, isn't it high time that the Sharia law also should be uh, amended or sh should also be considered to consider to enable women to be in the equal footing as that of the men? They are on the equal footing. What I think so, in my humble opinion, your lordship, uh, because uh, under the underlying principle of equality is uh, is not the uniformity to all in all respects, but rather to give them the same treatment in those respects in which they are similar and different treatment in those uh, in which they are not they are different. Like in the case of R.K. Gurd versus Union of Credit. So how are they different? So how are they different as far as property sharing is concerned? It's just that the personal laws uh, states that. Okay, like in the case of uh, R.K. Gurd and Union of India, it was held that the classification, however, must not be ar arbitrary, artificial or evasive, but must be based on some real and substantive distinction. So here the substantive distinction is of, uh, that of the customs. Like what? was happened. You're saying that the real and substantive difference is the customs. Yes, your lordship. Based on customs. Now you had quoted that uh, there should <clears throat> the uh, difference should not be arbitrary, etc., and it should yes, be based on substance. Yes, so I, I I substitute the word logic with substance. What's the substance in this, in this argument that uh, women should not be given the equal share of property? I'm not talking about this. Uh, I'm talking in a general parlance, your lordship. Likewise, happened when Dr. Pandit, uh, uh, when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru wanted a uniform Hindu code bill, uh, uh, they were protest all throughout the country just because they did not want their religious texts and laws to be interpreted by the parliament. Same, uh, same was it was happened uh, in the case of Shara Banu versus Union of India. There was dispute. The dispute between uh, between the part three of the constitution and the religious personal laws was raised again. Although the court uh, held that triple talaq was unconstitutional by examining it in accordance with part three of the constitution. But the fundamental, uh, uh, but the supreme and the fundamental dispute in law was completely unresolved because here is when the society at large wants no change in their personal laws. And they start protesting and disturbing the law and order. It is made copiously clear that these are an inclusive and not an exhaustive definition. Therefore, at first blush, it appears that all laws in force, which include personal laws, because they were they were the only laws which were in force in the territory of Indus. This is what I'm trying to state, Your Lordship. And I would like to uh, I would like to uh, cite the case of Inayatullah versus Gobind Dayal, in which uh, it has been clearly stated like uh, that, where in any suit of proceeding, it is necessary for any court, Your Lordship, any court, Your Lordship, under this act to decide any question regarding succession, inheritance, marriage, uh, marriage or caste, or any religious usage or in, uh, institution. The Mohammedan law, the Mohammedan law in cases where the parties are Mohammedans. And the Hind law in cases where the parties are Hinds shall from the rule of decision, except in so far as, as such law has by legislative enactment been altered or uh, abolished. The Supreme Court observed that. And even I would like to cite the case of uh, state of Manipur versus Suraj Kumar Okram. The Supreme Court observed that a law passed by legislature is a good law till it is declared as unconstitutional by a competent court or till it is repealed. This, what, this is what the thing uh, I, I just want to uh, state your lordship. I just want uh, 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 my uh, client to uh, get the property. Hence, it is humbly submitted for this honorable court that the share being acquired by the Fatima is not at all discriminatory because it is being governed under the cover shell of Muslim law of inheritance. As according to uh, the Muslim so, law. So, counsel, one doubt. Suppose uh, Fatima decides to undergo sex change operation, she decides to become a male. Will she get the equal share as that of her brothers? Equal share. As that of her brothers, if she decides to become a male, no, your lordship, she won't. Why not? Why not? Uh, because we don't have such a unified, uh, uniform civil code. No, no, no. I was saying that Fatima decides to become a male after undergoing a sex change operation. Then will, she, will she, that person get equal share of the uh, wealth as that distributed to her brothers? My brother wants to know whether there is any difference between uh, the, the gender at birth. And the gender at the time when the act has to be applied. Uh, you, you, sir, you are asking like uh, when it will like uh, when uh, Fatima will change the gender. Like she'll go through the uh, that process. Then the, she'll get the property or not. 
Is this your lordship? Yes, uh, you understood my question correctly. Uh, your lordship, she won't get that because uh, they are not considered under the Muslim law of uh, inheritance. Uh, there is no rule for uh, transgenders, uh, one who has changed their uh, sex. In the instant matter, the heir is entitled to succeed the property at Muhammad Khan's two sons and his only unmarried daughter, Fatima. Okay, you can come. The doubt that we are asking is what is the criteria for deciding the gender of the persons? Is it the gender at the time of death or is the gender of the persons by birth? Gender by birth. Where, 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 where do you draw that distinction? Where does it, where is it found uh, in either uh, statute? Talking in, uh, uh, in context of the Muslim law of inheritance. Okay. Where, where does it say that? I don't want your interpretation of it. Where does it say the Isma, we... Kiyas and the Quran, it states that uh, uh, there are only uh, two uh, persons who will be entitled for the property. There are male and female. There's no, uh, they have, yes. they have... So we are, we are not talking about transgenders. My brother was talking about. How, what if a female changes her gender and becomes a male? That is possible with the science that is applicable now. So at yes, the time of time, time of succession, if the daughter has become a male, would she slash he be entitled to the same shares as a male? That's the point. Uh, not in context with the issue, Your Lordship, but I can share my uh, personal uh, uh, personal note, uh, Your Lordship. Uh, in that case, I would like to cite the case of Nathya Singh Johar versus Union of India, where the Dr. D. Y. Chandra uh, stated that history owes an apology to the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ community. Uh, they they should accept the very way I am. Like I am what I am. They should accept the very way I am. So this is what the actual thing is. But in my case, uh, Fatima is getting the property uh, which she is entitled to. She is not being deprived of the right. Hence the religious instruction providing double share to the main counter right? uh, main okay, counterpart. I think, I think your time is almost over. Please conclude. Uh, as uh, I just uh, uh, I, I just want to cite uh, one more thing uh, that constitutional morality in a secular polity would employ the harmonization of fundamental rights, which include the right of every individual, religious denomination or sect, to practice their faith and believe. In a any fight. extra time that you are taking here will be deducted from your co councils it's just that it's just two lines, your lordship, just two lines. In accordance with the tenets of the religion and irrespective of whether, irrespective of whether the practice was rational or logical. Hence, uh, according to the Muslim law, she is entitled to inherit, inherit, inherit only one half, uh, one half the property inherited by her uh, male counterpart. This was uh, from my side, uh, your lordship. It was indeed an argue, uh, honor arguing before this court. Good morning. Greetings to the bench, Your Lordship. Uh, uh, as one, minute, one, one, one minute, Council. One minute, Council. Indeed, Your Lordship. Start. Uh, as my co-counsel has already dealt with the issue first, second, and third, this council seeks permission to proceed with the issue four and five. Uh, let's uh, forget all these formalities. Please proceed. Uh, indeed, Your Lordship. To begin with the uh, argument, uh, application of the Hymn Succession Act. Application of the Hymn Succession Act 1956. According to Hymn Succession Act, Section 8, Clause A and B, the property of a male dying in this state shall devolve firstly upon the heirs, being the relatives specified in Class 1 of the schedule. Secondly, if there is no heir of Class 1, then upon the heirs, being the relatives specified in the Class 2 of the schedule. A mother is a legal heir to her deceased son's property. Therefore, if a man leaves behind his mother, wife, and children, all of them have an equal right in this property. If the, in the present case, as per the facts, Arun was unmarried and had no children. Consequently, after his death, all of his property will get transferred to his mother, who is the only heir in the class 1 category, with the total exclusion of his father, as father lies in the class list of class 2 heirs. Uh, as similarly held in a recent judgment of Nilesh versus uh, Veer Bhattar Gowda, and others, Karnataka High Court reported in year 2022, where a class one Council, I think it would I think it would be better if you could argue the matter rather than read from the screen. Please uh, argue. Definitely, hey, your lordship. Uh, you're the dealing with of which the uh, issue number? You're dealing with which issue? Issue number four. I'm dealing with the issue four, your lordship. The framers of the Indus constitution took note of the adverse condition of the women in society and a number of provisions and safeguards were included in the constitution to ward off gender inequality. 
in this context article 14 15 clause 3 and 16 of the constitution can be mentioned these provisions are part of the fundamental rights guaranteed by the constitution the provisions regarding succession in the hindu code bill as originally framed by uh, bn rao committee and piloted by dr ambedkar was for abolishing mitakshara kopasunari with its co concept of survivorship and the son's right by birth in a joint family property and sub substituting it with, with the principle of inheritance by succession this was done in support of the women's right in succession civilized societies across the globe uh, ensure that women's inheritance rights are more secure than those of men uh, further to the recent amendments the hind succession act uh, the hind succession amendment oh, act council, right. council uh, you have read through the history of the hsa coming into being now my question is for giving protection to the woman or the weaker individual does that mean that the rights belonging to the uh, male should be taken away uh, is that how protection should be granted you lordship in my opinion it is certainly not because uh, there is a concept of positive discrimination and the women which are from uh, decades in memorial uh, weaker and vulnerable uh, class of the society that, that's the, exactly what i'm asking that's exactly what i'm asking Indeed, give sir. them protection but does that mean that the rights of a man should be taken away the uh, the positive discrimination uh, uh, for the women is just for uh, the security of the rights and uh, the father so then, so then what the, about the positive discrimination in favor of transgenders why is that not being accepted by you Uh, because of the various uh, uh, misuses and the lack of uniformity and uh, uh, lack of documentation, uh, your lord. That because is it is not that has to be addressed by your client. That is yes, for the state lord. to do. It is not for us to legislate. If there is lack of clarity, that is to be clarified by you, the state. Uh, indeed, your lordship. A but any lack of clarity on your side is... cannot be uh, grounds to that... deny the fundamental rights of a transgender person. Indeed, the lordship in the cases of transgender people, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty uh, and uh, lack of uniformity in the matters of uh, these transgender people. That's why it's, the state is not coming up with the uh, legislation. Uh, it will surely come up with a uh, legislation uh, in the future. But till now, there is no legislation. And, and until because then, and, and, until then, what happens? Until you take your sweet time to bring in the legislation, what happens to the rights of the transgenders? Uh, these stand in not consciously bound to protect their fundamental rights till you decide in your magnanimity to do that your lordship there will be a utter chaos if uh, the transgender people are being given the property rights in the hindu succession act because that the reason is that uh, they do not assign themselves uh, to either male or female that is the binary gender that are accorded in the hindu succession act and uh, if they uh, are given the choice they can easily change their uh, genders from male to female or from female to male to uh, inherit property and uh, to uh, to gain much more than uh, they share they are allotted to and the lack of documentation uh, only 8% of the uh, transgender people uh, have an aadhar card as per the census of 2011 they have identified themselves as a third gender in the aadhar card in their aadhar card the only 8% of the transgender people and uh, these so, lack so, so what's the point you're driving it i don't i didn't get the point what is the uh, point the you lack of, you lack of the lack of documentation and uh, the uncertainty that is prevailing among these transgender people and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, hard work that they will be needed to interpret the law uh, in the cases of these transgender people that is why uh, there is no uh, Uh, law uh, at the present moment to give uh, succession right to these transgender people. So, so can't the court make law where none exist? Uh, so your uh, argument, court... your argument lends credence to the uh, uh, arguments of the petitioner that Supreme Court has to interfere and make law where none exist. Uh, uh, certainly, the your lordship, the Supreme Court as the guardian can come up with certain laws uh, for the temporary uh, uh, meanwhile time uh, for some guidelines. Then after that, the legislation. Uh, can be enacted but certainly it has not been done uh, uh, up to date and even in the lanza judgment also you, uh, the supreme court lordship has not come up with any inheritance uh, laws relating to these transgender people they have been granted many more rights and uh, their uh, recognition and the article uh, do you agree that uh, it's high time that the court interfere intervenes and uh, 
make some make some law in this case and make some law regarding the inheritance of transgenders uh your lordship as the as the supreme court is the guardian and the supreme uh, uh supreme uh, judicial uh, take a deep breath please proceed the supreme court can definitely come up your lordship but uh, till the time being it has not uh, come up with any of the uh, legislation or any guidelines if your lordship is satisfied uh, may the council proceed with the further amendments please do like i said don't expect permissions for everything you do assume that all permissions are given and please continue with your arguments in, in, indeed your lordship uh, uh, to conclude with the uh, uh, the discrimination on the basis of sex is permissible only as a protective measure of the female citizen as there is a need to empower women who have suffered gender discrimination for uh, centuries hence for the defendant has an absolute right, right to deal with the property or as class 1a she is entitled to exclude her husband completely from the share of the property uh, uh, the council seeks permission to proceed with the issue 5 okay uh, whether the devolution of property of a transgender dying interstate be governed by the provisions provided in the concession act uh, moving on to the problems of gender identification as i have already stated council what is your, what is your uh, take on this on the whether, whether this uh, act concerned is very much credibly handling the uh, rights of transgender Uh, whether this act is a winner in handling the rights of a transgender uh, your lordship it is not a winner as such but uh, uh, giving transgender people a right to succession uh, only on the is, basis is, of is that a yes or no is like whether this act is a act is successful handling the rights of transgenders uh, indeed yes your lordship not completely but yes Uh, so you are saying that the, this uh, act is very much there in protecting the rights of the transgender. So on a plain reading, this court is not finding a single provision or a single section where the transgender is mentioned. Yes. Everywhere it is like men or women. See, even if we assume that a harmonious construction is possible, who do we club the transgender with? Do we club them with the man? Or do we club uh, them with the woman? Because those are the two options available. Your Lordship, uh, in Section eighteen twenty three, where there is written uh, by my learned brother, uh, the, even if we are go behind this harmonious construction, there are so many technical bar is there when it comes to the act is concerned. Uh, indeed, Your Lordship, there are technical bars, but. Uh, giving transgender people the autonomous right to choose their uh, to choose their uh, property rights according to themselves would be uh, unjust uh, certainly the law should shall prevail and uh, if there is no law regarding uh, these transgender people uh, uh, they cannot be inherited with the property rights on their own you lot say please continue with your arguments uh, let's continue be calm please continue no issues indeed you lot following to the uh, hind adoption and maintenance act the act has repeated usage of uh, gendered sections bandy notion of gender there are 36 to 37 instances of the term male and female in the adoption regulations respectively This creates uncertainty for transgender parents. Then, Your Lordship, how can Veremini, identifying herself as a transgender, adopt children as per Hindu religious principle? This is itself creates a question of validity or legality of her adoption. Uh, in 2019, Transgender Persons Protection Rights Act, uh, which grants protection against discrimination regarding residence, is also silent about inheritance rights. Individuals must apply for transgender certificate, without which they cannot avail any protection under the Act. Those states have stated that adopting a transgender policies, they are not binding and only reflect the vision of the government. Most policies are also silent on how transgender persons should be treated under existing law. Uh, the policy of reading gender terms to include transgender persons is not uniform. In Sumitra Kumari v. State of West Bengal, reported in year 2016, Calcutta High Court. 
the Calcutta High Court held that trans women would could not apply for ASHA posts specifically reserved for women. Thus, it seems that though courts have attempted to beneficially read gender term, this is not a part of the approach. Courts may choose not to read transgender persons within the Hind Succession Act, holding that the legislation legislature uh, consciously adopted gender terms for uh, descendants as opposed to its counterparts in the Indus Succession Act. To conclude with, it is uh, contended that the Indian laws are based on binary genders. Successes are often difficult to identify as transgender persons may lack documentation, could not marry or cannot prove adoption. Courts have always restrained themselves to deal with transgender initiatives rights uh, because of its complexities and non-informity. The Hind Succession Act 1956 defines the term here as uh, any person, male or female, who is entitled to inherit the property of an interstate. It grants right to sons and daughters, but does not envisage uh, transgender persons or anyone who changes uh, their gender identity. With this, the council seeks permission to move on to the prayer. Please proceed. Uh, wherefore, in the light of the issues raised, uh, arguments advanced and authorities cited, it is humbly prayed that this honorable court may be pleased to firstly uh, declare that separately uh, governed in separate order of succession of male and female under the Hind Succession Act 1956 Act is not arbitrary, uh, gender discriminatory, and unconstitutional. Secondly, declared that the various provisions uh, governing the devolution of the self acquired property of the Hin male dying interstate are constitutionally valid. Thirdly, declared that the religious instruction providing double share to brothers as non discriminatory and non violative fundamental rights. And fourthly, declared that the constitutional validity of Hin Succession Act 1956, excluding the property rights of father in total, valid. Fifthly, declared that the devolution of property of a transgender dying interstate shall not be governed by the provisions provided in the Hind Succession Act 1956 and pass any order, direction, or relief that this honorable court may deem fit in the interest of justice, equity, and good conscience. It was indeed an order uh, arguing before this bench. Uh, Ray Bittles, if any, by the petitioner. Indeed, Lord Shem. The Lord Shem, the counsel of the petitioner jury respect the contention put forth by the Lord Counsel for the respondent. With the permission of the Honorable Lordship, the counsel for the petitioner would like to uh, put forth few rebuttals to make further clear for us. Maybe. Please proceed. Indeed, Lordship. The Lordship Learned Council has pointed out that Muslim law does not discriminate between men and women. Then the counsel for the petition would like to know the intelligible difference and rational access in the said law. Second, the Learned Council has pointed out there is no discrimination in the Hindu Succession Act. But why is there a clear discrimination between male and female? Third, the counsel for the respondents were continuously arguing for the inherited property, whereas in the instant case, the whole issue is with respect to self-acquired property erosion. Fourth, the Learned Council has pointed out that the Hindu Succession Act is unreasonable because it includes uh, male and female. But here, an unnecessary classification has been made between the male and female. Thus, they themselves are validating the contention put forth by the council, uh, the council for the petitioners. Fifth, the Learned Council has pointed out that the transgender should be placed either as a male or a female. And they can simply do that by a surgery but to get into the ambit of the act. What if, but they, what did they choose to be themselves and not to change? Moreover, it is not that easy for the council for the respondent to quote that the transgender can change. They have to follow a certain procedure. Um, if, if I clearly quote it, section 6, 7 of the Transgender Act 2019, which provides strict rules for gender identity. And that is not a small procedure option. And finally, the council uh, for the respondent has pointed out that there is a dif uh, there's a difference should be based on substance and that is customs. So when custom is unreasonable, unfair, the court has all right to struck down that particular law, your lordship. The court has also done that in the past instances, your lordship. This, these were few rebuttals from the uh, side of the uh, petitioner, your lordship. Uh, the respondent, you can answer to the points based in the rebuttal alone. Most certainly, Lordship, uh, based on the cerebitals. Fair enough. Uh, talking about uh, when a law comes within the prohibition of Article 15, it cannot, it, it, it cannot, has to be again validated by a recourse to Article 14 for applying the principle of reasonable classification. As my uh, co-counsels, as my uh, 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 
aside from the petitioner said, as it has been st uh, stated in the case of Kathi Rani, Kathi Rani versus state of Saurastra. Likewise, in the instant matter, uh, Yusuf Abdul Aziz uh, versus state of Bombay, the Supreme Court held that the personal laws are immune from the scope of Article uh, 15. So the concept is interlinked and interwoven that there is uh, not any violation uh, uh, of uh, Article uh, 15 or Article 14, uh, your lordship. Uh, I would like to cite uh, cite the uh, shlok of uh, uh, Sanskrit, which uh, states uh, that Abhivadan uh, selection uh, with the patient at the Tvari Tasse Vardhante Ayubhita Yashobbalam. Uh, constitutional morality in a secular polity would imply the harmonization of fundamental rights, which include the right of every individual, relig religious denomination or sect, to practice their faith and belief in accordance with the tenets of, the, of their religion, irrespective of whether the practice was ro uh, rational or logical. Hence, the Supreme Court held that the personal laws are immune from the scope of Article, uh, 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 article 15. Talking about uh, the issue four, uh, uh, issue five, uh, uh, your logic, the inheritance requires identity documents in which any person before possession of the property or an assets needs to pr pr uh, prove their identity. As an example, only 8% of the uh, transgender persons have an Aadhaar card or voter eye card that recognizes the, uh, their perceived gender proportion, which is measured based on the uh, person who identified as others uh, uh, in the year to, uh, 2018. Uh, hence, uh, that is the uh, uh, sir rebuttal from my side to conclude uh, that the uh, uh, that the Mohammedan law in cases where the parties are Mohammedan, it should be governed according to that, and the Hind law in cases where the parties are Hinds shall from the rule of decision, except in so far as such law has uh, has been by the legislative enactment been altered or abolished. Uh, this was I rest my case, Lordship. Uh, it, it was indeed an honor arguing before this court. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, participants, please log off and keep your video and mute uh, on. On, we will call you after we have come to a decision. Indeed, Lordship.